Do you know that since the day that you were born, there is a constant battle which never ends over your soul? God on the one side wants to give you life and give it more abundantly, regardless of circumstances, He wants to make you a victor. But the enemy on the other side, He wants to kill, steal and destroy from you and He wants to make you a victim. That, this is why it's important that we can't just come and say, well, I serve God my way and God understand. Because God doesn't understand. He has a covenant with His Word. He is faithful to His Word and He empowers us through His Word. And therefore, we've got to serve God according to His Word. There are many people in church and they are still lost. And this is why I want to look at the heart of man. I'm going to show you a couple of hearts and maybe you're going to see yourself somewhere within one of these hearts. And when we look at the first heart, we see a man that is still controlled by the desires of this world. We see his eyes that are red, which is indicating when we look at the eyes, drunkenness. Proverbs 23 verse 29, if you go read it, it's so interesting. It says, who has bloodshot eyes? Is it the one who spends long hours in the taverns trying out new drinks? It says you shouldn't gaze into wine and then see the sparkles in the cup, how smoothly it goes down. He says before, because the end of it is like a poisonous snake. It stings like a viper. And when we look at the heart of this man, we see that there are various animals which represent sin that is within our heart. Because according to Mark 7, verse 21 to 23, our heart, all sin originates within our heart, whether it's evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, foolishness, all of this starts within our hearts. So what is in the heart of man? When we look at the peacock, it speaks of pride, the sin of being arrogant, the sin of I'm superior or inferior, or you can't teach me anything, I know everything, or it is my education, my social standing, my riches, my culture, my self-importance that brought me the success. The dog speaks of bodily desires, immorality, adultery, and we know according to the word of God that God only allows sexual relationships between a husband and a wife, between a man and a woman. The pig speaks of sin of drunkenness and gluttony, piggishness, greediness. You're never satisfied. You devour harmful food, harmful habits, immoral suggestions, expressions, immoral pictures, immoral literature. And when you go read in Ephesians 5 verse 18, and I will give you all the scriptures in the links and comments below, when you read the word of God, it clearly says that people that worship idols, commit adultery, um, that are thieves, that uh, are immoral and selfish ambitions, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. The tortoise speaks of laziness, sluggishness to obey, and witchcraft. And rebellion, the Bible says, is as sinful as witchcraft. Carelessness concerning their salvation that leads to eternal death. Shell of a tortoise is often used by witch doctors for the practicing of witchcraft, of fortune telling, of magic. In Deuteronomy 18 from verse 10 to 12 clearly states that these things are detestable to God. The leopard is a very savage and cruel beast. And in our heart sometimes we have that hatred, anger, a bad a uh, uh, temper uh, that many times lead to murder and the word of God says even if you hate somebody you have already committed murder in your heart the frog this is a sin of greediness the love of money there's a frog in the Congo he sits in front of an ant nest and he just eat it eat until he bursts and die this is uh, how our lives are destroyed by gambling by betting and often this leads to stealing and murdering and suicide and then eighth we see in this heart is Satan, the father of all lies and the father of those who tell all lies. A small lie is as bad as a big one, so whether it's a spoken word, whether it's acted, whether it's pretending that you are who you're not, causing discord in families, being a false witness. But then you see in this heart is also a star and it speaks of the conscience of the heart of man which is dead because of the sin. And Hebrew 10, 22 says clearly that our conscience needs to be sprinkled by the blood of Jesus so it can become alive again. The eye that you see in the heart is the eye of God. And today we've got to understand that nothing can be hidden from God and from this flaming heart. He sees all the secret intentions, all the secret thoughts within your heart. And the little tongues all around speaks of the love of God. It surrounds the sin 
sinner and although he cannot approve of the sin he still loves the man and he, he doesn't want this person to die in sin but he wants you to turn and to live and then we see that the tongues also speak of the blood of Jesus uh, but, but who overtake uh, the world and who take away the sin of the world the angel represents the word of God and the dove is a sign of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit cannot be in a heart that is full of sin. But then we see in the next heart, now you're starting to hear the message and to notice the message of God within your life. You start to hear the word that for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. You start hearing the word of God that just as each person is destined to once die and after this the judgment, you hear the word of God that but cowards and unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worship, and all liars, their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur, and this is the second death. And now you allow God, you come and say, Lord, I am a sinner, I need you within my life, and He comes, and as you ask Him to forgive your sins, He comes, and the light of God that shone on the sins is, is coming and clearing and cleaning your heart. This is something that you and I cannot do by ourselves. It is only through the blood of Jesus. And now what we find, we see in the next heart of man, we find that there is the angel standing right there with the word of God. You see the love of God that he has for you through Jesus Christ. Who took away your many sins. You have an encounter with the blood of Jesus. Your life is completely changed. Love and peace of God enters into your heart right now. It purifies your heart. The Holy Spirit purifies your heart. You have a deep desire to live for God. You have a deep desire to serve Him. If that's not there, then God has not changed your heart. You haven't allowed Him yet. Instead of loving the world, you're loving God. Now, look at the animals all around. And you know what? They are hoping to find an entrance back into your heart. And this is why it's important to have an encounter with God, to be born again, so that, that you will not allow them to come back in your life. Because this never changed. They are always in every person's life for the rest of their life, standing outside your heart, seeking a way in. But we look at the next heart and we see the temple of God within this heart. Just as Jesus died, this heart is died unto sin and it lives for the righteousness. You are dead to the world. The world is dead to you. The Spirit of God directs your life and no longer your lustful pleasures. You see how Jesus died on the cross, how he was beaten. Uh, these are all the symbols of what happened to Jesus. And you see that you are healed through every punishment, the crime of thorns took away the curse from your life by his stripes you are healed you've got a purpose you've got he's using you he's changing you you can see he's healing your heart and he, the full work that he does within your life and now we see that the angel is appointed here with the next heart to God this heart according to Psalm 34 verse 7 for the angel of the Lord is a God he surrounds and defends you all who fear him but we see the devil is still standing. He's still looking at your heart. He wants to devour you. He doesn't want you to live this life of fullness and abundance in God. But you and I must learn to resist him. And therefore you need to be in a church to teach you. You need to be in the word of God. You can't do it your own way and alone. And now we see the next heart. And this is many times what happened. Maybe you did know Christ. But this heart is a heart that started to slip away from God. The one eye is open, the one eye is closed. You grew cold as a Christian. The one eye is shamelessly looking around, making love to the world. No longer ready to suffer for Christ, no longer upright, losing identity. He's surrounded by the temptations all around him, but instead of resisting them, now he is actually giving in to them. The false promises of the enemy. He, you go to church, but this heart is cold. He plays with the things of the world. He makes room for, for sin. We see the star, which is the conscience, is growing dim. The cross becomes unwelcome. Your faith shakes. The peacock. Now pride, pride comes in your heart and you forget it's the grace of God that saved you. The pig. You desire dream drinking and alcohol and gluttony again. The dog, you start telling your dirty jokes again, having your pornography, your wrong company, worldly entertainment, the stabbing, you're mocking and making uh, and resisting Christianity, the snake, the jealousy for other people that has got more and better than you. Now it opens the door for hatred, pride, the frog, you've got a love for money, anger and bad temper show themselves when you're in trouble or disappointed. 
You love men more than God and fear them more than God. And now you are so scared that you will be rejected if you don't work, walk in the worldly pleasures anymore. And we see what happens in this heart is the Holy Spirit is forced to leave because sin and the Holy Spirit cannot live together. The angel, the word of God the, uh, has left sorrowful in the looking back to see like the lost son in Luke 15. If you will not change your heart, but your conscience, the heart, the conscience of this heart, unfortunately, cannot hear Jesus pleading uh, for him. He cannot see the bottomless pit and hole of hell at his feet. The father of lies now occupies this heart. And what's happened with every animal, there's a strong man, a strong spirit that is keeping this heart in bondage. And therefore, through this evil tormentors, they keep him bound. And there's no repentance, no searching for God or forgiveness. But we see the end, the next heart, we see the end of this person. When this person reached death, death comes unwanted. It comes unexpected. Now the false pleasures of sin appear and the, the reality of this dreadful cost of sin now this person face. Agonies of hell are becoming real. Empty words of your friends cannot help you. Money cannot lengthen your life. Everything you once lived for now is mocking this soul. He re has rejected the love of the Father and has come under his judgment. And him now realizing that how terrified it is to fall in the hands of a living God. He had hoped to give his life to God when it suits him or maybe at the end of his life. But now it's too late. And he is sent to an eternal hell which was prepared for the devil and his angels. And every one of us must die and one day appear before the judgment of God. But now when we look at the victorious heart, even though you, you experience the test and the temptation, this heart won through, through Christ Jesus, through his blood. This heart, can you see, is surrounded by the enemy and to lead him in a wrong way with pride, immorality, with, with money. The donkey instead of the leopard, it tells you that sins take on many forms, many names. The glass of wine is the false pleasures of the world. The stabbing dagger is the insults, the gossip, the mocking, the threats that you have to endure. But the star, the conscience is light. It is bright. The heart is full of faith and full of the word of God. The money is you have dedicated that money to God. Your tithe and your offering, you use your money wisely. You have a loaf of bread and fish. You've got a clean and controlled life. You don't spoil it by strong drink and gluttony or tobacco or drugs. Your your heart is a house of prayer. You go to the church regularly despite circumstances. The Bible is an open book. You daily get your spiritual food. You don't have a thirst anymore because it quenches your thirst. He loves to carry his cross because you know there's no reward without his cross. His mind is fixed on God, not on the world. He's ready to meet God. Uh, he grows. He does not fear death. He's risen with Christ. And now the last picture of the heart is where this man is on his deathbed and he knows that death holds no punishment, no fear. Death is destroyed. Victory is complete. Jesus is the resurrection and he longs to see the face of God. The angel, the messenger of God is waiting to carry this clean spirit back to God. His soul and spirit is set free from the imprisonment of this mortal body and he ascends through the open gates of heaven to Jesus who loves him and who died on the cross for him. A happy welcomes a white person in the presence of God and the Lord meets him and tell him, you know, a well done, good and faithful servant. Come and share in my happiness. And today I want to tell you that today is your day of salvation. God is waiting for you. The Bible says you must be born again. John 3 verse 3, he said, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. As a child, you are born from the seed of your parents. Now you are born from the seed of God. There is no other way. It is a supernatural thing that happens in your heart where your, your Holy Spirit is being born again. And you have to do it now. The Bible says 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2, uh, at just the right time I heard you on the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now Today is salvation. Repent and turn to God. Acts 3 verse 19. Now repent of your sin and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. It's not a matter of being good or bad. It's a matter of being dead or alive, being lost and found. Following God might cost you everything. But I want to tell you, following him, not following him will also cost you everything. And Romans 10 verse 9 to 10 says, If you confess with your mouth with Jesus that he is Lord 
and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. And I want to tell you today, God is not angry with you. God wants to change your life. He wants to restore your life. He wants to give you a new start today. And if it is you and say, I want to give my life to Jesus now. I want my heart to be right and do it God's way. Come and say this prayer with me right now. Dear Lord, I need you in my life. Everything that I am, I give to you my whole life. Thank you, Lord, that you forgive my sin, that you change my heart, change my life. I will never be the same again. I receive you. I am your child and nothing can snatch me out of your hand. Nothing can separate me from your love. For I am your child in Jesus' name. And now I pray for you. I pray that the, every power of the devil is broken over your life. Thank you, Lord, that you make this person that said this prayer free from every bondage. That they will know the will of God, understand the will of God, be strengthened in the inner man. That they will go from strength to strength and live their lives for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you. We're going to continue with this series. You can't stop here. You need to hear what to do next. Go to my website. Listen to my messages on the blood of Jesus. Get involved in a church. You need to grow. This is only the first step. There's a lot more that God has in store for you. God bless you.